Hello, crafty friends. My name's Alicia, but you can call me Crafty Owl. And welcome, or perhaps welcome back, to my channel. Each month, I like to stop by and revisit a past sheetload of cards for my Sheetload Rewind series. Sometimes I switch them up and make them different. Sometimes I just make new sets. This is a great way for you to revisit a sheet load you might have already downloaded, or if you're newer to the channel, see one of the past editions that you might not yet have seen. In today's video, we'll be rewinding it back to May 2021 and using some products from Not Too Shabby's latest quarterly release to make some cute, quick, and easy cards. If you would like to see the original videos for May 2021, check out the description box below for links. And at the end of this video, I'll tell you how you can download the free printable if you're a subscriber to my channel. As I get into the process, I will tell you more about the products and tools that I'm using today. But as always, if I ever leave you with any questions, feel free to leave those in that comment section below and I'll get back to you just as soon as I can. Let's get crafty! Before I get to the process, I did want to stop by with a special invitation. I'm going to be going live later today with Tracy and Yvette for Sheet Load Live. I hope that you'll come and join us as we chat with each other, create with the latest sheet load of cards, and give away our cards to three lucky members of the audience. I will have a link to the video as an end card at the end of this one, and it's also linked in the description box below. Hope to see you there! This printable originally called for two pieces of 6x6 pattern paper, but because all of this gorgeous paper in the Rustic Blooms pad is double-sided, I chose a single sheet that has floral and wood grain, which you know I love that combination. I'll be cutting this piece per the instructions on the printable, and this is a no scraps edition. This is a super simple cut. You cut your six by six in quarters, and then you take one of those and you cut it into thirds. For that fourth piece, I did turn it around to make sure the wood grain was going the way I wanted to when I made the cuts. Now at this point, you could flip flop these and do some wood grain squares and floral little rectangles, but I did decide that I really liked the floral on the big square, so all three of my cards will look the same. Next, I cut down the card stocks I would need for my cards, and since I already showed this in the original process video, I will just link that below if you need some help. Here's a look at everything I cut while off camera. I made three off-white card bases, and for my matting, I chose guava and cinnamon from Tailored Expressions. I thought the guava matched the flowers nicely, and the cinnamon matched the wood grain brown. And finally, I cut some little pieces for my sentiment, which if you note on the printable, it does suggest rounding the top corners and putting a fishtail in the bottom. But for me today, I'm just going to round all of the corners. Now, if you are a channel member, I do have an SVG file to help you cut this, so make sure to check out the monthly blog. I wanted to add some texture to the guava background because it was a lot of white space. So I took this off screen with a Distress Stripes embossing folder and I just love the texture it adds. To round the corners on my sentiment piece, I brought in my We Are Memory Keepers Corner Chomper and I used the quarter inch side on all of the edges. This is just a quick and easy way to add a little extra interest to a plain rectangle. I brought in my pattern paper and the cinnamon mats, and I adhered each pattern paper to the center of its mat, trying to get as even a border as possible. These cards are going together so quickly and easily, and I love the fact that all my pattern paper is used up. Let me know in the comment section below if you like a no scraps edition or if you like one that has a little bit of pattern paper left over to either make a card with scraps or to use on the inside of your cards. 
Before I can put the cards together, I need to stamp my sentiments. So I brought in my Mini Misty, the sentiment pieces, cinnamon ink from Tailored Expressions, and this Blooming Sentiment stamp set from Not Too Shabby. I'm going to be using the stamp that reads thanks a bunch and I need to set this up toward the top center of my piece so it fits with the sketch. Once I had it in place, since this was a new stamp, I removed those manufacturing oils with my fingers and then I got it inked up and stamped. Once it's set up, I can easily stamp the remaining two pieces. I just love being able to do multiple stamped images with my Misties. And now it's time to start the assembly. The first thing I do is add adhesive to the back of the square piece and I place that to the left side of the guava cardstock, getting as even a border as I can on the top, bottom, and left edges. Then before I place the other two pieces, I'm going to adhere these together. The sentiment piece goes a little bit to the right of center behind the small rectangle. Luckily my wood grain had that straight like line there so it was nice and easy to line up. Once those two were adhered together, I added adhesive to the back and placed it onto the card front. I tried to get that same border that was on the left side over on the right. Now for the remaining ones, instead of doing one card at a time, I did more of an assembly line process. Let me know in the comment section below if you do an assembly line where you do the cards in chunks or if you put one card together at a time. Make sure to include the hashtag, hashtag crafty question, so I know you've answered and would like me to see it. Once the pattern paper and card stocks were all together, I then adhered these pieces to the front center of the card base. Once again, trying to get a nice even border all the way around. I added the remaining card fronts to the card bases and then to finish the cards off I wanted to add a little sparkle so I brought in the Rustic Blossoms Enamel Dots from the new Not Too Shabby release and I decided to go with kind of the darker green ones because I thought it matched some of the greens in that pattern paper. I added a trio to each of the card fronts and to finish off the insides and use up some of the guava scraps, I embossed some more skinny strips and added those for a little extra color and to bring that texture to the inside. I finished off the back with my personal stamp and here are some close up looks at the finished cards. I hope you enjoyed seeing how I made these three cute, quick, and easy cards using the May 2021 sheet load of cards and some new goodies from Not Too Shabby. If you did, as always, a thumbs up is appreciated. Now let me tell you how you can download the free printable. As always, I do ask that you're subscribed to my channel before you click on the link, which I'll tell you where it's at here in just a minute. We do just go on the honor system here. I don't make you email me any proof. Please just make sure you click on that subscribe button below before you click on the link. You're going to find the link to the May 2021 sheet load of cards printable down in the description box right above my supply list. Now you can download it to your device and print it or you can just download it and use it on screen. There is going to be a third page in the file you download and that has all the copyright and use information. So once you've read page one, I would suggest printing only pages two and three if you are going to print it out. Until my next video, I hope you're all having a crafty day. Bye bye. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch all the way to the end of the video. I hope now you'll consider clicking on one of the videos or playlists I have linked above. And if you are interested in any of the products or tools I used in today's video, I do have some links in the description box below.